Hello guys, Xanator here, and welcome to what I'm going to be calling Bourbon and Building. You may be asking why, or you may know very clearly because I tweeted it, and also it's probably in the thumbnail somewhere. But this is going to be a relaxing thing. This intro will probably be the most, you know, exciting thing that I do, because that's usually, <laughs> usually what happens for me. Uh, but basically, I live in Kentucky, specifically Central Kentucky, where everything bourbon is. I live in the Bourbon Trail. I live near Bardstown. I live near Louisville, Kentucky. I live near Lexington or in Lexington, Kentucky. And um, literally from the, I live like very, very, very close to like Woodford Reserve and uh, Evan Williams Maker's Mark is just down the road a bit and uh, stuff like that. So I felt what better than bourbon and building, building in Minecraft. I thought about doing it in Sea Skylines, but I figured it did enough Sea Skylines. So here we are uh, doing something perhaps a little bit different. Uh, and today uh, we'll be starting. First of all, I gotta say, uh, just because I know I have a lot of young viewers, this may not be for you and I understand that completely and that's fine. Just make sure to know that I drink responsibly. <laughs> as weird as that may sound, I don't drink to get drunk. I don't do any of that. I drink because I enjoy it and I like enjoying fine things like bourbon. Uh, much like how a lot of people drink wine and things like that. Uh, I'm just a fan of the taste and I like trying new things. Um, I very, very, very rarely um, get anything off of it, uh, of alcohol. And uh, if you're under 21 and you're in America and I don't condone drinking in any way. And uh, if you're in any other country where you're 18 and you're allowed to, obviously that's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be 25 in July, so I think we're fine. <laughs> I think we're going to be fine here. And I know this bottle is going to seem huge, but that's because I'm planning it to last this entire series. That's how little I plan to be drinking of this. So we have Evan Williams, Kentucky's first distiller, debatable, um, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And, uh, obviously bourbon is pretty much a product of Kentucky. There's a few places that still call it bourbon. Uh, in other areas, but um, usually if you hear bourbon, it's from Kentucky. Technically, there's a rule where it can be outside of it, but by law, most of the time, it's got to be from Kentucky. Um, but yeah, we have, it's big. I have a massive head, and it's big. This thing's $20. I got lucky. I was at Liquor Barn today, which is a local Lexington thing, and um, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> But this one, uh, this one's really good. I do like uh, F. Williams a lot. It says distilled from a time-honored formula originated in 19, or 1783. Evan Williams is produced in the heart of Kentucky bourbon country. This bourbon is aged and charcoal filtered for a smoother, more complex flavor. World renowned by bourbon lovers. Evan Williams set up his distillery on the banks of Ohio River in 1783 and is historically recognized as Kentucky's first distiller of bourbon. Okay, so maybe he is. This special bourbon is a genuine or genuine sour mash that honors his pioneering heritage. So that is pretty great. Um, there's a car alarm going off outside. Not sure if you can hear that. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's any other fun information. This is 1.75 liters. So yeah, I am not drinking all of this in a very long time. Um, but yeah, I got to say... It's very nice. It's 43% alcohol per volume. So yeah, it's a lot extra aged in oak. It has, I wish you could smell it, but um, it has a very nice smell. If you've ever had a bourbon bowl, um, it's just that pure on smell. It's just, it, it smells almost like chocolatey. It's so nice. It's so, so nice. Uh, I'll be drinking some of it straight, but for now, as I do with all new bourbons for me, uh, I usually mix it with something, and today I, I decided to try it. Oh, I gotta lay down my desk. All right, fine. I decided to try it just with some Diet Coke, and I, it's kind of diluted a bit. Um, I have caffeine free Diet Coke, and I was, I've not had much of it. Um, loud. I've not had it mixed much with Diet Coke before, so I just tried, decided to try it. And the verdict is it's very nice. Mm, it's very, very nice, actually. The ice got on my tooth and kind of hurt, though. <laughs> but it's, like, really... It's almost like a sweet, and it reminds me a bit of having, like, a... Um, it's a bit like having a chocolate for some reason. That's what it really reminds me of. 
and I really, really like it. I think it's delicious. And my wife, she's my wife Elle, she hates bourbon with a passion. I think she would maybe like to like it, but she doesn't at all. Um, she's more of like a vodka, gin, um, Jaeger, sort of like, I guess, clear spirits, I guess you could say, uh, drinker. But she also likes, you know, fruity drinks, which, you know, I'm not going to say that's like a womanly thing because, good God, I love, like, you know, cocktails and fruity drinks and everything. I think they're delicious. <laughs> um, they're probably like one of my favorite things, actually. And I know this is lame. I know this is very lame. But I'm playing on peaceful. Because I want this to be a peaceful, nice, and relaxing thing. And uh, that's how we're going to do this. But, uh, yeah, so we'll we'll have different bourbons like in this. But uh, Evan Williams will probably be the main factor uh, for most of this thing. Just chilling back, drinking a bit, and having fun. Um, and I think it'll be fun. I think we're going to have a good time with it. And we'll be able to, you know... I uh, kind of experiment with maybe making some drinks out of it as well. Maybe I can make learn to make like a whiskey sour, which is probably my favorite cocktail. Um, I can learn to make like an old fashioned or, you know, Manhattan, whatever you want to say. And then, um, you know, just pretty much anything I'm willing to try and uh, see how it goes. Because it's, you know, it's fun to do. And again, uh, you know, I feel like there might be a little bit of flag on this video due to the fact of, you know, there's a lot of underage people that watch me. Uh, but again, just realize, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for, you know, people being very responsible. I'm not a person that likes to get drunk. Um, I'm a person that just likes to respect things, um, no matter what it is. Uh, so just to keep that in mind. And if there's any parents out there that do not feel like this is just for their child, that is fun. Uh, I completely understand and uh, they do not have to watch the video and that will be all fine and dandy by me because I do not want to upset anyone because um, I know people have different views on alcohol. I grew up in a like household where alcohol was like the forbidden. <laughs> like it was, if you drunk even a sip a day, you were a drunk, you know, sort of thing. But that, that quickly changed. I grew up and I found out it was just my parents trying to keep me a little better about things and... Um, like when they were over for Christmas, they even had, uh, we had wine and, you know, things like that. So it, it was just different for the time. I mean, it worked as a kid. I didn't drink any, uh, well, much at all. I did some, but I shouldn't have, obviously. Um, but you know, when you're a teenager, you're dumb and you do stuff and all that. But again, I would never condone, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so the reason I chose, my, chose Minecraft was it was a good change up from what I had been doing uh, with uh, playing City Skylines. Plus, it was um, it was kind of a choice not made by myself. Uh, it worked with the name, first of all, Bourbon and Building, uh, which, you know, there was only two building games I could think of. There was Minecraft and City Skylines. Um so I decided Minecraft because it was doing well on the channel when I uploaded like the snapshot videos and taking comments and stuff. And I'm still going to be taking comments. If you have any questions for me and you would like to, you know, have your comments answered and, you know, get things uh, figured out. And, you know, if you have questions about anything, um, you know, anything I may do, even if it's, you know, about my work, I'm willing to answer them. Um, if you don't know me and this is your first time hearing me before, you may be confused. Uh, so basically, I am a full-time, I guess you could say YouTuber in a way, but not really. You know, I don't make anything off this channel at all. Um, but I work on YouTube full-time uh, because I work for a lot of big YouTubers. Uh, well, I have worked for a lot of big YouTubers. I've worked for, uh, it's a bit controversial at this point, but I worked for Toby Buskis, uh, Toby Turner, Toby Games. Uh, I helped to launch the Toby Games channel back in 2000, October of 2010. Uh, where that's now amassed 6 million odd subscribers, something like that. And uh, it's done incredibly, incredibly well, um, you know. And uh, obviously it's kind of faltering now just with uh, some stuff that has gone on controversially with Toby um, previously. That he seems to be working past and then... Uh, you know, uh, from there on, I moved to working for Zach Scott Games. 
uh, which I've been working for him since April of 2012 or 13 now. So I've been working for him for, let's see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, maybe about five or six years now. I think actually more around six years, hilariously. Why did I do that? I forget how to do this game, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to left click to get to the menu, which is not the way to do it at all. Or right click, rather. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. I don't have to worry about the knot for once. I can just kind of let it happen and place the wrong thing. I can do that. That's fun. <laughs> uh, so what I'm doing is I'm doing this so I can kill some of the sheep. I know that's terrible, but I need it for a bed because I do want to be able to sleep uh, just to avoid the knots, even though I don't really have to. So let's go ahead and do just that. Um, but yeah, after I worked, uh, or I'm still working for Zach, and um, I should be for a good long time, and I've really, really loved it. And um, I basically, I edit all of his funny montages, uh, along with my wife for now. My wife joined me uh, pretty much when we first got together, uh, and she does a majority of uh, the edits now, actually, um, because um, I'm running another channel, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but she does... A uh, huge amount of edits, and um, you know, I I do like the sort of just approving at the end, even though I don't really have to do much because I, I mean, she edits just like me. She's fantastic at it, and uh, ooh, some coal. But yeah, we uh, we do that full time now, and uh, basically from that, you know, I, I still do a lot of stuff for him. I'm sort of. Uh, a YouTube consultant, I guess, because I, I know it doesn't look like it, judging by my channel, but I know every way to uh, grow a YouTube channel. I know the SEO, I know, you know, the algorithms and uh, things like that, and, you know, I could work for biz bigger businesses and things like that if I really desired, I'm sure. Um, I've not really tried, and, but, you know, I've done, like, some work for Rooster Teeth, I've done some work for IGN, I've done things for... Um, I'm trying to think of other big names that I've uh, done things for. Uh, I've done work for I Justine. Um, I've done work for her gaming channel. Uh, there are plenty of times, uh, you know, uh, just a lot of stuff. I've done a lot of stuff over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, since, and I started when I was 16. That's why I can never say, you know, I can never stress enough. And I've done, said this on Twitter. You know, start when you're young. And treat it as a business if you want to. I mean, you can treat it as a hobby. It's whatever you prefer. But I'm better when I treat things as a business and take them very seriously. Um, you know, uh, it may not seem like it sometimes when I'm doing stuff like this, but I treat every day like a business day. Uh, even though, you know, I'm very fortunate to where this morning, you know, I didn't feel like recording. I didn't feel like working uh, just yet. So I went out. Um, me and my wife went to a coffee place. Uh, we went to Goodwill and we bought a bunch of summer clothes and a bunch of nice clothes uh, for each other and uh, tried on a bunch of uh, like blazers and fun stuff like that and just had a good day. Um, and it's great because I can be home by noon. Uh, I don't have to be someone that has to go out after five and be worrying about, you know, uh, being busy because of other people. I can go out at 9.30 a.m. and be back by noon. And I'm very fortunate and I can't even begin to like think of how I've gotten this lucky. Um, but in reality, you know, I think about it and I've worked very hard for it. Uh, you know, I, sometimes, you know, I've managed to pull 17 hour days. Uh, there's a lot of times I sit in this very chair, just editing for, you know, literally the full day. Um, you know, when I was, you know, 16, probably all the way until I was 21, there wasn't a time that I didn't spend probably at least 12 hours working a day. Uh, no matter what day, weekends, and, you know, I'm I'm available and I work 24-7, you know, 365 days out of the year because that's just the, the way of how I work. It's sort of, I compare it to being a realtor, you know, you work all the time because you need to make, you know, for a realtor, they need to make the sell, but for me, I need to be able to be on top of things, I need to get stuff done, I've got time constraints... Um, so a lot of people think it's easy, and yeah, it may be to a degree, but it's very grueling to a certain degree as well. Um, but I've been lucky to be able to still do it. I have a lot of fun with it. 
sometimes I get really bogged down and think that it's not right for me and I'm not enjoying it. But then I remember all the things that I'm able to do. And, um, you know, the thing is, if I wanted to just tell Zach, you know, I want to, and Sips as well, which I'll mention uh, him shortly. If I just told them that I wanted to take the next week and a half off and go to Paris or go to, you know, North Carolina or go to the beach, they would just say, okay. And it would be okay. I don't have to, you know, do this whole big spill of trying to get paid time off. And I could do it, you know, once I could do it once a month, as long as I just get my work done as well, I could take my laptop with me and manage to do it. Um, which is what I'm hoping to do more of this year, you know, just be able to travel a bit more and, uh, use my Thacker Vlogs channel, which if you haven't subscribed to already or heard of, which I've not made the main video for, uh, go check it out. So I've got a video on there right now of doing a whole two weeks, 14 days of only eating lean cuisines. That was fun. Um, doing little silly stuff on the side like that. And, you know, I'd be able to vlog for the channel doing that. Uh, with my wife as well if she's uh, wanting to be in them and it, you know it's just something different it's something fun and um, you know being able to take the time to be able to do that being able to say that I can't do that is going to be really fun so that that's sort of the you know there's a, there's a lot of benefits that come with it with working the crazy hours and you know everything uh, it you know and it, it, it can be stressful but you know, that every job's stressful. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be a fast food worker. You could be working in the mines. You could be working, uh, you know, as an accountant, any nine to five or 12 to four, whatever you're working, they're all hard. I don't think there's a particularly easy job. Um, you know, even people who invest or do stocks or, you know, something maybe with idle income, like it's still, you know, you had to do something to get to that point. And you still have to be on top of things and you still have to stress about it. It's all hard. Um, that's why I don't ever take for granted what someone does. If it looks like they're doing something easy, it means that they worked very hard for it. And that's usually how I look at it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but yeah, I just went on a big spill. Uh, <laughs> but next, uh, we can talk about uh, the next thing I did, which um, I'm still obviously working for Zach. I don't plan to stop that anytime soon. I'm going to go as long as I possibly can with him because, uh, you know, I, I love his act to death and I love working for him. Um, but uh, I started working for Yogg's Cast Sips and the way I got that gig was, um, so I, I'd watched Yogg's Cast for a very, very long time. I'd been a big fan since they started like Shadow of Isafel and uh, everything like that. I wasn't there for like the WoW days and World of Warcraft days and all that good stuff, but um, you know, I'd started watching them and I really enjoyed, uh, their content and everything that they had to do. And, um, you know, I had a lot of respect for, you know, their, their content. And, uh, then I found Sips when they started doing the Ticket series. Uh, it was Sips and Yogg Shin as well, and they're doing stuff together. Started watching him, uh, and eventually got to the point where, you know, I was, you know, enjoying it a lot and then Sips decided to start streaming one day on Twitch in about 2015 I think um started doing Euro Truck Simulator 2 which was a personal favorite game of mine because I have a real big obsession with simulator games uh, and then when he was doing that I went ahead and kind of started editing around some of his highlights I made a channel called Switch uh or S Switch yes that's Sips and Twitch put together because I'm dumb uh, Swit, Sips, Twitch, Highlights, there we go, I got there in the end, and, uh, when I did that, uh, they were doing really well on the r slash Sips rub, subreddit, rub reddit, Jesus Christ, um, but they were doing really well, people were enjoying them, asking for more, saying that they were hilarious, which, you know, I felt really good about, even though I'm not the one who being hilarious, I'm just making Sips funnier, I guess, uh, or just showing how funny he really is and condensing it into, you know, five to ten minute segments. Um, and, you know, that was great. I really enjoyed that. And uh, after a while, after I did about four or five of them, I had like a little, you know, portfolio. Uh, I sent them to Sips. And basically what I did is I didn't ask for permission to do any of it at first. 
I just took all of his stuff, edited it, and then put it up on a on a YouTube channel, which are still up by the way. If you look up Euro Truck Simulator highlights by Sips Live, uh, they're still available to watch. Um, and then why's my phone going off a lot? Oh, I see. Uh, and then when that happened, uh, I messaged Sips and being like, I hope you're okay with this, but I've been editing your stuff and I think they're pretty funny, but, uh, you know, if you want to check them out, that'd be cool. And then he replied to me saying that he had been watching them and they thought they were really cool. And he was like, if you want to make some extra money and do these highlights for the main channel, that would be great. And then after completely freaking out, um pooing myself for about three hours uh in excitement because you know sips had messaged me uh because <laughs> i was quite the film boy at the time um i was super ecstatic you know i, I couldn't have been more uh, excited and plus i really needed like uh a bit of extra money because you know i mean i was I, extra money's great and everything sounds fantastic especially when you're uh how old was i 20 years old or 21 years old or something like that when you know you you know I was doing fine and everything I was surviving and I was I was living at home so I didn't need extra money but extra money is great and it kind of prepared me for the future and I could set up like retirements and things like that and I'm making it sound like I make a lot no <laughs> I mean I've, I'm I'm well off like with myself and I'm able to live uh, a little bit I live below my means and we're able to survive and everything but I'm not like splashing my money out like I'm Jake Paul <laughs> or anywhere near that. I'm on like a, I guess I'm like a median family, if that makes sense, in America. Um, but, you know, it, it was huge for me. When I'm 21, like, I started out making, you know, just a little bit of money, um, and it was huge to me. I could have been making like $2 a week, and that would have been more than I was making before, because I was making nothing at the time. Um... I'm trying to figure out where I want to build, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm running around and stuff. I was just kind of collecting stuff as I go. I might just go west and keep going west until I find, like, a nice place. I mean, this is kind of nice, but it doesn't really have enough. I don't like this forest that much, so I'm going to kind of go away from here. But, yeah, I started doing stuff for him. I started editing his, uh, he started GTA series, GTA 5. Uh, Grant that photo if you don't know the game. Uh, which is still up on his, uh, live channel, or, well, our live channel, I guess, in a way. Uh, it's still up on there, the entire series. It's a great series, probably one of the best one he did. Uh, maybe it's just nostalgic reasons yet again here. Uh, and then all of the highlights went up on his main channel, which was huge because, you know, seeing something that I had done on his main channel was really fun. And another thing I did was uh, A Day in the Life of Sips, I believe. Uh, and then that was, I think that's what he ended up naming it. But uh, basically, it was him uh, in GTA, but what I did is I made the entire video from scratch. I recreated his character to the best of my ability. Uh, I modeled it after one of uh, the GTA videos they did on the main channel, the Yogscast, and uh, ended up making that into a uh, little, like, you know, with the filmmaker that they had in that Rockstar implemented into GTA. And then he uploaded that to the channel. It did incredibly well. I don't know how many views it has now, but it had quite a bit. Um, but some of the stuff he was doing was getting like 600,000 views, 100,000 views on average. Uh, so that was great. And then, uh, you know, we were working on the Sips Live channel, uh, getting stuff up that grew up really quick. It's now at about 160,000 people maybe at this point. Uh, so I've actually got the YouTube plaque behind me. I've just not hung it up on the wall. Sips let me have that nicely because uh, he said I did the work on it, so I might as well get it. Uh, so yeah, I have the YouTube silver play button, the original one, instead of the new one they've been doing. The new one looks really, gra uh, really, really nice, but I'm kind of glad to have the old looking one because um, I feel like I'm a, you know, maybe a little bit more of a, a tiny group of people that actually managed to get that one. But yeah, I got that, uh, and it's still going really well. Uh, the channel's, you know, growing every day. We're getting, like, a, almost 100 subscribers a day, and uh, he's growing on Twitch, which makes us grow on there, and it's been really, really good. Um, couldn't be more chuffed with how it's been doing, and, uh, you know, it's it's definitely helping me as well, um, you know, keeping me busy, and it does keep me busy because usually my computer's bogged down doing stuff like that. Um... But yeah, I do that pretty much full, well, I do that full time. 
uh, while doing Zip stuff and doing the, you know, edits and um, obviously my wife helping me helps tremendously. And she's been doing the um, Zip's highlights. She's been doing a lot of uh, or every single one of the Skyrim ones thus far, which he played Skyrim, which made the channel blow up yet again. Ooh, I was trying to look over there. I forget it doesn't turn anymore when you do this. So I was trying to counteract it. Uh, but she's been doing every one of those and they've been doing incredibly, incredibly well. Um, so, you know, I couldn't, again, couldn't be more happy with it and, um, it'll continue to grow, which is even, uh, better. And it's, it's nice to kind of baby something and seeing it grow up like that. This looks like a nice area. If I can find a little clear spot, let's just go ahead and, uh, I don't know if you can, can you just pick these up now? Is that a thing or is it just, okay, perfect. There we are. I love how the boats work now. They're so much better than they used to be. Uh, but yeah, then after, you know, with doing that, uh, I'm pretty much just doing that always now and doing both of them back and forth, you know, doing consul consulting with Zach, helping him with everything and uh, recording a lot with him. And since I started recording Sea of Thieves with, recording Sea of Thieves with him, I can't talk. I'm not even having a bourbon, which I can actually use a drink right now. Ah, that's nice. But uh, it's mostly Diet Coke and ice at this point. It's kind of like went down a lot with like a nice taste of bourbon. Um, it's actually very nice. I know when I'm going to drink it straight in a minute, it's just going to burn through my nose. I love that feeling, but it burns. Um, that's what my wife hates a lot. It's that burn and everything that gets her because she's like... Oh. <laughs> uh, justifiably so, because it it's not for everyone, um, you know. It, it's something that I think you have to get a very acquired taste to, and you have to be dedicated to liking it, but um, I was. <laughs> and that's what happened. Uh, I don't know what that was. I don't know where that noise came from. But anyways, sure. That's fun. Uh, so yeah. After, you know, doing the entire, uh, oh, there's, there's a sheepy there, but after doing, I'm so really curious about that noise, I think it was a Twitch alert going off, I think someone followed me on Twitch and then it like went through OBS somehow or something, I really don't know, but, uh, after doing that, uh, you know, for a long time and then we started playing the Sea of Thieves, I say doing that for a long time. We did like 10 episodes or 11 episodes. My channel started growing a bit more on here again and started to gain a little bit more uh, traction. And I decided to take another crack at it, another crack at YouTube. Because I'd been quite successful on YouTube before and, you know, it, it was doing enough before where, you know, I was making about, you know, $1,000 a month. Like, this was in 2011, which, again, I was a lot younger, so that was, you know, fantastic and... That was well more money than I made. I just turned like 17 at the time. Um, you know, it wasn't comparative to anyone else. And, but there wasn't many people doing, you know, stuff at the time. And I started doing Minecraft in 2010 or late 2009 on the channel. Uh, pretty much when I made this channel. And, oh, I did not make that. <laughs> and that was huge, you know, because I, I was doing it basically before it was like even proper alpha. And, um... You know, I got recognition by Notch and everything when the game was coming out, and then that helped me, and uh, that's why I had so many views, and I had, like, an original series, which is all gone now. I don't know why I deleted it. I can't even remember. Uh, I hate myself for it so much sometimes. Um, but, yeah, I did, annoyingly so. And, uh, but uh, there, there's, like, remnants of it here and there, uh, sort of around the channel, I believe. But yeah, I really loved uh, Minecraft, and I used to play so much of it, and it did so well on the channel. I had like 400 episodes of something, like, all together. Um, and it was great. I loved it. And then uh, I got quite ill at one point. Um, you know, I, I was having, like, a lot of problems because I was really heavy at this point. I used to weigh 420 pounds um, at my heaviest. Uh, 420 blaze it. 
But, uh, and you know, 420, it's a, it's a lot of weight, and it was way too much for my heart, uh, even. But um, 6'5", 6'6", something like that. I was actually taller at the time. I think I was more like, you know, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, or something. Um, but the weight was starting to really mess up my knees, and it was starting to give me, like, uh, high blood pressure real bad, and a bunch of things. I still have high blood pressure, but not in the same way uh, that I did. I was, like, 200 over 120 all the time. Um, now I'm more like 140 over 90 or 140 over 85, uh, which is not great, but I'm getting better than I was uh, by far. And now that I've reduced my sodium intake, it's a lot better as well. But uh, that's a different story for a different time, I guess. But, whoa! <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I kind of like over here, that looks like a nice little area to start, actually. But yeah, so that was, you know, like it, it kind of took me out of being able to do stuff and then... Uh, with being that big, I kind of struggled with, like, some depression stuff, and, you know, a lot went down, uh, and then I lost 150 pounds, or no, it was 150 pounds, it was, it was enough, I can't do the math this quick, and I'm, I'm dumb, and I apologize, but, uh, I went from 420 to, I'd say, about 206, no, 250, 260 pounds, uh, which 250 is about the weight for my, uh, weight for my height and my build, um, as my doctor has tried, he's they, or she um, has tested me for gigantism because I have very large bone structure. Uh, so I'm not just someone saying, oh, I'm big boned. <laughs> um, which, you know, I'm legitimately big boned. And it's an actual thing that I have. So it makes me where I can carry a lot more weight in a different way than a person. Um, I could sort of compare myself to, like, if I got to 250 pounds and I was, you know, like, I'm still relatively muscular and everything. Um, I've lost a lot of it over the last bit, but it would, my body shape would be more like Thor in a way with like the big shoulders and everything. Uh, because I'm actually, even at a small weight, I'm wider than a door frame, uh, like a standard US door frame. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things. Like I always do this when I go through a door frame, which you can't really see me turning my shoulders, but um, I decided I didn't like this area, but I do like this area. So I'm going to kind of settle down here. I apologize for just running around for about 30 minutes, but I wanted to find the right spot. So yeah, that was, you know, like a bad time and everything and getting my health situated and getting back to where I was ready to do stuff. So I took about a year off and when I came back, Minecraft had completely exploded to like a degree I never had before. Sort of like how Fortnite has now. And uh, I just couldn't get my popularity back on it. Uh, you know, I tried, and then I was faltering, I was doing like a video here and there, and I wasn't being consistent, with consistency is everything. Uh, it's, it always has been, it always will be, uh, and I just wasn't being consistent at all. And that was the problem. Um, so basically, I kind of lost everything there, and I just kind of gave up on it for a long time, and I started editing instead, and that's how I got all the editing jobs that I've done. Um... So, you know, that was huge. And I basically originally grew because of Tobuska. So everyone that subscribed to me may still, if you've been subscribed to me for a long time, you may have found me because Tobuska probably liked one of my videos. Uh, that was like a deal that we had going on where he would do that every so often. And uh, it wasn't a deal. It was just like he was, you know, a friend at the time and he was helping me out. Um, but yeah, so that, that was like a big part of it. And, uh... You know, once that happened, I kind of just focused on doing stuff for other people and consulting and learning about it instead. Uh, but now I'm just trying to do it myself again while also doing the two other jobs. So basically I'm doing three jobs um, and doing, you know, some other stuff on the side where I'm, you know, sort of trying to learn other things. I'm always trying to learn things now. I probably annoy my wife with it because I'm always telling new things. Um, I'll just read something on the internet and be like, ooh, I want to learn this for the day. Uh, and then I'll get really obsessed with it and I'll forget about it completely. It's just the way I am. It's, uh, it's, it's the way that I live. Uh, so, okay. Minecraft. <laughs> I guess I could talk about that some, like what I'm going to be doing in this. Uh, for this series, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. I just know that I'm going to be coming on here... I'm going to be getting a really stuffy nose because I do every time that I talk too much without breathing properly. 
Yep, can't breathe through it at all. That was hard to breathe. <laughs> um, you know, we're going to do this and hopefully be able to... I just burped. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, we're going to hopefully uh, make just nice houses. I'm not going to say they're going to be nice. I shouldn't say that, actually. We're going to make houses um, that are functional. And we're going to play the game of Minecraft, but play it peacefully because I just want to relax and build stuff. I don't want to like worry about stressing of, you know, if I'm going to die one minute or anything like that. And uh, I'm just going to enjoy myself. And that's the main thing. Uh, because that's how I used to play Minecraft when I wasn't recording. I just used to play it peacefully. A lot of the times in my old series, I used to, you know, show, you know, yeah, I'm playing like if, if something happened and I hit escape and then it. Because it used to show that you were playing on peaceful, like on this menu, I think. Um, so I used to cut it out and just pretend that I didn't see monsters the entire time. I just got really lucky, but I was really on peaceful the entire time. It's just, I hated it that much. I just always enjoyed the relaxing part of it, which might be why I like City Skylines and games like that so much. I think I just like nice, relaxing games that, you know, a dad would sit down and play for 20 hours at a time. Uh, because that's basically my life. I'm not a dad, but I, I pretty much am one. I was saying to my wife earlier, because this shirt, it's a uh, motoring Blue Ridge, which um, is a Wheels Through Time t-shirt. It's a place in North Carolina that you go and you see basically every type of motorcycle that there has been for the last 110 or odd years. So like literally a century plus of motorcycles. Um, and they all run. It's really, really cool, and it's great. It's in uh, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, right outside of Asheville. Um, and uh, it's a really great guy who, he's on TV as well, I think. He's been on, like, American Pickers and stuff like that. Um, but he's, like, a really nice guy. Talked to us for a super long time. And uh, basically, he does a lot of... Uh, oh, he does a lot of really, really great uh, uh, stuff with the motorcycles, and but like it, it's such a dad shirt because it's just like full on motorcycle shirt, and everyone I feel like it's just one of those things that a dad wears, like it's dad attire, and that's just like you could just say that I'm a dad. I, I, you look at me like today I didn't I bought this entire thing of bourbon didn't get ID'd. I really expected it. I like had my ID at the ready. I was ready to give it to her. And she didn't even ask, and I felt a little bit offended, I gotta say. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I was almost about to ask, do you need this? Please ask for this, I'm begging you. Uh, but no. Nothing. So, that was great. And uh, just to get this started, it's going to be a box. It's going to be a square. Um, because it's the easiest way to start out. Um, if you remember any of my original series or even any of my recent series of Minecraft, I'm not a builder. <laughs> I tried making a series about building and I got bored. I got really, really bored of it because it was taking so much time that I just couldn't enjoy myself because I like to go, I like to get the buildings done quickly and do the fun stuff. So I like to be getting into enchanting, I like to be getting into, you know, um, mob farming I do really like that that is one thing I do like about having mobs on um, you know things like that I was really into you know that sort of thing I like making automatic forms getting pistons which is one thing regrettably I might not be able to do because um, I need sticky pistons uh, unless I can manage to make it with a regular piston and maybe make like a two way system which is what I'm going to try to do because since I'm on peaceful I got to work ways around it um you know, and making like automatic forms where you just turn it on and then, you know, all of it gets harvested and goes down to the middle and uh, then you are all good to go. Uh, so, you know, I'll probably be doing a lot of stuff like that. Um, just because that's fun to me and uh, that's what I enjoy. And hopefully you'll enjoy it too because it's, you know, I think as long as I'm happy, I'll be good in the videos and then hopefully more entertaining in a way. Um, and I don't know how long I'll make these videos. I don't plan to edit them very much. I think I'll pretty much be, just be talking straight through on these. And uh, hopefully being enjoying myself. 
But I think what I'll do, uh, just to keep a little bit of a format, if I remember, uh, I'll do my best to remember and make sure to remind me in the comments if I do forget because I do want to be able to do something like this. Um, I'll try to have some sort of a drink. Um, you know, in the beginning, like how I just have this with Diet Coke and all good and fun. Diet Coke and ice. I'll try to have that and then I'll try to have a bit of it just straight at the end. Uh, I'm not going to do like shots and stuff like that because that's not really my thing unless you really wanted me to do it. But I don't really want to get drunk <laughs> or buzzed. Um, it's not my thing yet again, but I will take a drink, I'll be honest. Uh, and getting to the bottom of it, it's a little more strong. That's drunk walking. Not drunk. But, um... Let's see, I think we can just take out these and then we're actually centered, which is kind of nice. So there we go. And, uh, is it still... Yeah. Oh, wow, well, you get three doors now. And these are funky. Okay. You know what? That's fine. I'll make that work. Because I think this could actually be nice to have a little differ, uh, differentiating. That's a word. I just said it funky. Uh, another thing I could do... Let me go ahead and cut down this tree. Uh, we have to deforest slightly so we can actually fit in what we want to do. Uh, I'm going to make a front porch uh, because living in the country, uh, I'm a huge fan of a front porch. And uh, even though my wife is from England, she has become a huge fan of the old front, front porch as well. She understands why the old men just sit out on the front porch with the shotguns and <laughs> enjoying themselves. So that, that's not what I wanted. How do I fix that? Okay, there we go. That's better. <laughs> that was weird. So how do you make fences now? Is it like this and then... Oh, okay. That's easy enough. I thought it was actually going to be harder and I wouldn't be able to figure it out. That might be enough what I'm going for. So... I guess we could do... We'd have it like that, and then maybe... I want to bring it out a little bit. I don't want to make it too bad. And I'll put, like, cobblestone under it, because I like cobblestone. I'm not, I'm not too fussy about having it all, like, a smooth stone and all of that. So... Just thinking something like this, which I'm going to need some more, but that's fun. we got plenty of wood to do so, and obviously I need to change out the floor in here as well, which I made to also make cobblestone, uh, all things depending. Um, if I feel like it's the right move, which I think it should look pretty good. So let's go ahead and uh, do just this, and then we could have... Sort of come in like that with uh, this as well. So it'll be like, whoop, didn't mean to do that. So this kind of makes like a, you know, a sort of covered porch. I think it'll look nice. Uh, I hope it'll look nice. <laughs> that's the that's the goal. Looks like I've run out again, but that's okay because I can uh, go back and make some more. Again, plenty of wood and to be able to do what we need to do. Uh, there we go. That's all I meant to do, but that'll work. To be able to get my six. And... I think that should look okay. You know, it's kind of like a nice little start, but maybe I'll leave in... Because we have the extra. Just to look like it has a bit more support. And then we'll fill in the rest of it. And we'll do a... Probably a cobblestone roof. I think that should look pretty nice. Um, so we can even just fill it in like this for now to kind of get started. And we'll sort of peek it at the top so it'll look all nice and pretty, hopefully. Uh, very much hopefully. And uh, we could have this and this out. Kind of have symmetrical windows. I guess this is going to look a bit like a craftsman style house, I guess you would compare it to. And then, uh, we'll figure out where to put the windows on the inside later on. Uh, oh. I 
Oh, it's only a one gap. Okay, yeah, that's a problem. That's fun. I was wondering why everything looks so off there, but now I know. <laughs> All right. That's better. Okay, yeah. I knew something looked a bit funny, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. Does that look good? No, I don't like that. I'd rather have it just straight up like that. Because I like being able to have a bit more headroom. Alright, there we go. Perfect. And we'll, uh, you know, obviously be able to finish up everything later on. Uh, for flooring, maybe since the roof will be cobblestone, maybe we'll do something else for the flooring. Uh, we could even go funky and maybe even try the... Did we not pick up, like, the granite stuff? I thought we did. I don't see it. I could have swore we had it. Maybe I threw it, because usually I would. Uh, but we could even, you know, start using that. Maybe make, like, you know, kind of a polished granite flooring or something of uh, the sorts like that. I don't know. Could be fun to try, though. So, uh, let's see. Alright, so that is gone. Uh, anything else to maybe do here? I do not know. I think that should be fun. Uh, so we'll make this be the small start for this. Uh, but what we'll do, I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this out. Uh, so, oh god, it's so heavy. I shouldn't have got such a heavy one. <laughs> it's a, a bit regrettable having it so heavy. So, this, I can't really show it, so I'm just going to do it down here. You may hear it glugging a bit. I won't do much of it, just a little bit, because, again... I say a little bit, but that was much more than I needed. <laughs> and back over here. Loud thump. So yeah, that was much more than necessary, but that's what it looks like straight. Ooh. Smelly. It smells good, though. I don't know what it smells like, actually. It just smells like bourbon, I guess. Because, yeah, there, you're, you're, there's, like, people that can be like, oh, I get hints of this and that and this. I just smell bourbon. I smell alcohol. <laughs> That's my honest opinion on it. it. Smells sweet. Um, more sweet than, you know, like a typical one, I guess. Yeah, I would just say it smells, you know, typical sort of like sweet. I tried to smell while having my mouth slightly open because you kind of get like a bit of a taste. There's a tip for you if you ever feel fancy enough. I learned that from a uh, distiller. And I'm in, uh, I've got Buckingham Palace glasses. I don't know if you can see that or make it out properly because the reflection, but let's go and try it. Oh yeah, that burns. <laughs> it's funny with bourbon. When you drink it, it like burns a bit going down and then it goes up your nose and like clears everything out, which is great for me right now because it's very well needed. But um, it's made like salivate. It's really good. So Evan Williams, I didn't realize, it's very cheap. Very, very cheap. Because for 1.5 liters, of this Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It was $20. That's pretty crazy. If you know the price of normal bourbon, say like a Maker's Mark 46, which is like a newer one, I think for probably, probably, a, you know, maybe half a liter, I would say it cost you about $35. You know, something like that. The Maker's Mark 46, I went to the uh, launching party for that. And it was, it was nice. It was very strong. This one's actually made my lip go a bit numb, which is hilarious. My, my, the bottom of my gums is numb. Um, so that's funny. But, uh, yeah, this is actually, um, it, it mentions Louisville, Kentucky on the bottle, but this is actually bottled in Old Evan Williams Distillery, Bardstown, Kentucky. Which Bardstown's about an hour from where I live. Uh, I've been there many a times. It's known to be the birth home of uh, bourbon, which I guess makes sense because it's the Kentucky first distiller. 
Um, it's a very, very beautiful place. If you ever make your way out to Kentucky, I suggest it. Um, I think in this series I'll be talking... I don't know if you can hear that motorcycle out in the background. I think in this series I'll be talking a lot about Kentucky. I'll probably be talking a lot about personal stuff to a degree uh, without getting too personal in my life. Uh, obviously today I talked to, you know, a bit about, you know, my sort of uh, life with work and stuff. I think this will be more podcast related uh, and I hope that's fun. And I'm going to do one thing here and I apologize if this bothers you me cheating. Uh, I'm doing it because it makes my camera lighter. <laughs> it keeps me bright. Um, I don't feel like it's cheating too much. Because if I made a bed, I could... Which I have... I don't have the materials for it. <laughs> I thought I had the materials. Um, but I could obviously just run out and get some wool and everything if I need be. But um, I guess it will be treated more like a podcast in a way. Uh, maybe, you know, I'll be able to get my wife on here, but I know I can get my wife on here sometime and maybe just talk with her and stuff and she can be drinking something along with me as well. Not bourbon, unless I make like a old, like a whiskey sour or something like that. Um, but no, this is like, hmm. It's really nice. Who knows? <laughs> oh. great it's really nice though i would like highly suggest it i think it's like um you know obviously if you're above of age and all that as well but uh it's a good bourbon i wouldn't want to do a full shot of this like i wouldn't want to like down that much that's a lot and that's probably over a shot to be honest but yeah that was too much <laughs> it's good <laughs> I really enjoy it a lot um you know sometimes I'll have the face of like bore you know like <sighs> but it's it's an enjoyable face oddly enough it may not seem it but it is but uh yeah I, I hope you've enjoyed this um it's been fun it's been fun doing something a little bit different um you know, two of my favorite things in life is coffee and bourbon. Uh, so kind of having a series about coffee, having a series about bourbon is fun. And I consider these more podcasty in a way. And uh, it just happens to have something semi-interesting in the background. And, you know, as long as I'm enjoying myself doing it, I think that's great. As long as you guys are enjoying it, that is great as well. I hope you do. And um, be sure to leave feedback and everything in the comments as well. And uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I'll try to get this edited and try to get it out by tomorrow, which will be the 9th of May. So if you're watching it then, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for all the support, um, you know, with me trying to come back and everything. Thanks for all the positive comments. I've been getting a lot of great comments from uh, people like uh, Carlos. And uh, there's one, I can't remember the name. It starts with C. Um, but always comments on my stuff. And you know who you are. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Spock has been coming, uh, into my Fortnite videos and giving me comments and I appreciate it very much. I don't know why I'm nearly burping. Oh, that's terrible. Burping bourbon. That should be the real name of the series, Burping Bourbon. Um, but no. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be doing this, uh, probably, I'll probably record these maybe a little bit at a time or maybe like every other day or something like this. Cause, well, I'm saying that, I don't mind to drink every day. Like, just a, you know, little bit of it. I just don't want to overdo it, um, because I'm not a person that likes to do that yet again. And I don't want to drink every day. <laughs> and if there's a day that I'm not, you know, able, uh, but I still want to record it, I'll just record it and drink some water. Uh, it's fun. It's still going to technically, I can talk about stuff and talk about bourbon and all that good stuff. I can tell you about the ones I've had, because I've had a lot uh, living in the land of bourbon, I've had, you know, uh, Buffalo Trace, which is, you know, in Frankfort, Kentucky, very close to me, and uh, Maker's Mark, of course, Jim Bean, uh, Wild Turkey, Flatwoods, uh, which not a lot of people know about Flatwoods, or is a flat, flat boat. Um, I was saying Flatwoods because Flatwoods, Kentucky, that's where Billy Ray Cyrus is from. <laughs> uh, you know, I've had a lot of, like, random ones, and there's a very small ones as well that maybe I can get some stuff to try as well. Um, like Town Branch and other places like that, which is like Altec and not a lot of people know them, but 
they do Kentucky L and things like that as well, which is fun. I could implement. Uh, but for now, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and goodbye. And well, why not?